Welcome to XAR Template Tutorial Lesson 122 for the XAR Web Designer 9 Premium Software. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to create a fixed position button that stays on the side of your screen no matter where you scroll at within your web browser. And the reason that I'm making this tutorial is because I had a tutorial request on how to do so. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is show you an example of a link that the YouTube viewer sent me for what they want to accomplish. So let me go to my web browser and on this website you'll see that on the left hand side there's three tabs and those tabs will remain in the same exact position no matter where you scroll at within your web browser. In other words it has a fixed position. So that's what we're going to focus on creating. However, in this tutorial we're not going to go through the whole process. In fact we're only going to focus on creating the buttons first and then in the next following tutorials, we'll focus on adding the code necessary to create the fixed positioning. So let's go ahead and go back to XR Web Designer. And the first thing that we're going to do is go to our toolbar and select the rectangle quick shape. And I'm going to create three rectangles in my workspace. So I draw the first rectangle here and then hit Control C, Control Shift V to make a copy on exactly on top of that. And then I'm going to bring that down hit control C and then control shift V to make another copy. Okay. So now we have our three rectangle buttons that we want. The next thing we're going to do is change the color. So let's go to our color editor and let's change the color of each of these buttons like so. And I'm going to change that like so. And I'm going to change the color of this as well. And I'm going to assume by now that you're more familiar with the program. So I'm not going to go through every single step on how to create the rectangles and the color. You know, if you have questions, you can always leave a comment and I'll do my best to assist you. So with that said, let's go ahead and create the text for each of these buttons. And if you go to your toolbar and select the text tool, we're going to write some text. In this case, you can't see it because it's the same color as the background. So I'm going to change the color of that so that you can see it on screen here. And once you have your text, let's go ahead and select it one time with the left click mouse. And you're going to see that you get the rotational handles on the outside of this text. And we're going to hold down the control key, left click and drag and make it vertical like so. Okay. And we're going to drag that on top of our first text. And I'm actually going to change the color of that text so that it looks better on that background that we set for it. Then I'm going to select that text and hit control C to copy and control shift V to make a copy exactly on top of it and then drag it onto the second button and then hit control C for the second button or I'm sorry for the second text and then hit control shift V to make a copy exactly on top and then drag that down to the third button. So now we have our three buttons. The next thing that we want to do is change the text. So I'm going to change the text for the second button and call it blog. And I'm going to reposition that a little bit so that it's more centered. And then for the third button, I'm going to call it uh, YouTube. Maybe you want to link to your YouTube account. So you'll add a button for that as well. And once you do that, the next thing I want to do is I want to group each of these buttons. So I'm going to left click and drag over both the text and the background and hit control G. And that's going to group that as one object like so. And then we're going to repeat that for the second and third button. So drag and select over it, hit control G to make it one object, left click and drag over the third button, and then control G to group those as one object. So you'll see that every button is grouped as one object. Okay. So now that we have our buttons, the next thing that we want to do is export these as images. So let's select this first button and hit control shift E, and that's going to bring up our export dialog. And we're going to save this on our computer. So make sure you know where you're saving this at on your computer. In this case, I'm saving it in my web design folder. So I'm going to give this a name as Twitter for the file name. And then the save as type, I'm going to leave that as PNG. Make sure that for the file name that it looks exactly how you want. And when I say that, I mean in terms of the case sensitivity, because this is case sensitive. And that's the reason I have it all in lowercase, because it's easier for me to not have to worry about it when everything is in lowercase. And make sure your save as type is exactly what you want it to be because we have to reference this file later on when we start adding the code in, in the next following tutorials. So go ahead and hit the export button and hit the export button again 
and that's going to export that first image. Then select the second image, hit Control Shift E, and you'll notice that it shows our Twitter button in here, so you can see if it exported to the right folder, and it's all in lowercase. But for the blog, we're going to type lowercase again, and save as type, leave that to PNG, hit export, hit export again, and it's going to export that second image to the same folder. And then we're going to repeat that process one more time for the third button. And again, you'll see that the blog is in there, so that means I exported it to the right folder. It's all in lowercase. And for this one, we're going to write in YouTube, all in lowercase. And again, the save as type is set to PNG, hit export, and hit export, and we're done. So now we have all of those buttons exported, and that is the first part of this tutorial series. And we don't actually need these buttons anymore because we saved it on our computer, so you can delete that. And you don't even need to save this file. In fact, I'm going to close it out and say discard and remove it all together. But if we go on our, our folder, you'll see that it has the blog, it has Twitter, and it has YouTube. So all three of those files are now saved on the computer. We no longer need that XR file that we were working with. And you'll see that the save, the, the save as type is set to PNG for each of those images. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful, and if it was, don't forget to embed, comment, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next tutorials that are going to show you how to add in the code to help create that fixed position button on the side of your screen. Thanks again, and have a great day.